Hello and welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. And for this video, I would like to talk to you about synaptic communication or describe synaptic communication. A synapse is a communication between two cells. Most commonly, we're talking about a neuron communicating with another cell. But there are other types of synaptic connections, just so you know. We're going to talk about what's called a chemical synapse, synaptic communication between one neuron and another cell. I'm going to do this just using pictures. This is supposed to be an axon terminal. Um, of a presynaptic neuron. Presynaptic because this is the cell that's going to send the signal. The signal travels from this cell to another cell. And I'll draw the next cell, just a piece of its membrane. This cell that's receiving the message is called the postsynaptic neuron. This part of the cell, this membrane, is called the postsynaptic membrane. And if this is the presynaptic cell, then this membrane here is the presynaptic membrane. The cell that's receiving the signal, by the way, could be another neuron. Remember on the neuron cell model, we have synaptic connections to the cell body or to the dendrites of a neuron. Um, that synaptic connection could also be even on the axons. Or it could be connecting to a completely different cell. Remember how muscle cells are stimulated, skeletal muscle cells? by synaptic communication between a motor neuron and the muscle cell. There are also synaptic connections in glands. There are synaptic connections in uh, lymph nodes. There's synaptic connections in all kinds of cells. So for the purposes of this, um, we'll leave this cell alone in terms of, where it is, of what it is, because it could be anything. So that's the exon terminal. This is the exonal buton of the presynaptic neuron. Inside of this axonal buton will be vesicles. And those vesicles will have neurotransmitter inside of them. So these little red dots that I'm drawing are representing neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter is another thing that varies. Remember when we talked about stimulating muscle cells, the neurotransmitter was acetylcholine, but there are different types of neurotransmitters. There's norepinephrine, there's acetylcholine, there's GABA. Um, and a bunch of other ones that I can't think of right now. Um, so we've got synaptic vesicles filled with, ve filled with neurotransmitter. On the postsynaptic membrane, there will be receptors for that neurotransmitter. And I'm going to draw my receptors in green. OK, in terms of steps of communication, you remember action potentials. This is an axon, and axons undergo action potentials. At resting state, the inside's negative, the outside's positive. But when an action potential comes down, the charge flips. It changes, and we go from positive on the outside to negative on the outside and positive on the inside. That stimulates this next area, positive on the inside, negative on the outside. And the area behind it returns to resting. This charge change now reaches the axonal buton. The effect of that charge change reaching the axonal buton causes channels, voltage-gated calcium channels in the membrane. Remember voltage-gated sodium channels and voltage-gated potassium channels when we talked about action potential? This is another type of voltage-gated channel. When that action potential comes down, the charge change inside of the cell stimulates this channel to open. But this channel is specific to calcium, Ca++, the calcium ion. So calcium diffuses into the cell, into the axonal buton. 
And the increased level of calcium inside of the axonal buton causes these vesicles filled with neurotransmitter to dock with the presynaptic membrane and undergo exocytosis. So I'm going to draw my lowest vesicle here as if it's docking with and undergoing exocytosis. And that releases neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter diffuses into the synaptic cleft. The next thing that happens is the neurotransmitter goes across um, to the next membrane. This area, by the way, is called the synaptic cleft, this part of the synapse. The synaptic cleft. So the neurotransmitter is from the presynaptic membrane. It diffuses across the synaptic cleft and it binds to these receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. And that's really where we stop here because what happens next depends on what the neurotransmitter was that was released and it depends on what the receptor is for that particular neurotransmitter. To give you one example right now, acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter we've dealt with, with for muscle contraction. If this neurotransmitter is acetylcholine, then the receptor here might be a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. If it is, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is going to open and let sodium come into the cell and potassium leave, and the overall effect is to approach threshold. So this cell's charge is going to change in an excitatory manner because the voltage is going to approach threshold. If this is a muscarinic receptor for acetylcholine, a different type of acetylcholine receptor, then we could have that excitatory postsynaptic potential, the approaching threshold voltage, or we could have what's called an inhibitory postsynaptic potential where the voltage goes lower away from threshold and the cell membrane becomes hyperpolarized. That's one example of a neurotransmitter and two different potential receptors. And again, there's lots of different neurotransmitters. Um, acetylcholine, GABA, dopamine. Uh, and they have their own receptors and most of those neurotransmitters have more than one type of receptor. So the effects vary widely depending on, again, the neurotransmitter and the receptor. What's neat about that is it means it varies widely inside of the body. So for example, your sympathetic nervous system uses norepinephrine as its neurotransmitter. It releases norepinephrine to the effectors. And an example of an effector, um, smooth muscle that is in the blood vessels of most of your systemic circulation, when they receive the a norepinephrine, you get contraction and an increase in blood pressure. But some of those blood vessels actually get dilation because they have different receptors for the neurotransmitter. Your, the smooth muscle in your bronchi undergo dilation so that you can breathe better, better in a synaptic response. They have a different receptor for the norepinephrine, so they have a different response. So the same neuro, neurotransmitter can cause different responses in different parts of the body. That's important for homeostatic function. Um, and it's kind of cool. Anyway, that's as far as I wanted to take synaptic communication. I'll talk more about neurotransmitters shortly. If there's any questions, again, please feel free to contact me. And thank you again for watching.